When you think gaming PC, there's obviously one thing that differentiates it from a regular computer. Plenty of RGB lighting. Wait. When you think of gaming PC, there's obviously one thing that differentiates it from a regular computer. A powerful graphics card. Even dropping a solid GPU into a boring office box will turn it into a capable gaming machine. But have you ever wondered why this was a requirement? I mean, plenty of computers have CPUs with integrated graphics, sometimes called iGPUs, but they have a reputation for being low performance and not good for much other than playing less graphically intensive titles at lower resolutions. So why haven't we figured out a way to strap powerful graphics processing into our CPUs? Well, one concern is space. If you have a look at how much room the GPU takes up on a graphics card, it's not very much compared to the rest of the PCB. But notice that it's about the same size or maybe even larger than your system's CPU. And all it does is process graphics. Simply put, there just isn't enough die space available on a CPU package left over for graphics processing for an integrated GPU to be as powerful as a discrete card. But why can't we just make GPUs smaller? Well, the processing units that make up the chips are very tightly packed, and as transistor sizes have gotten smaller and smaller, the likes of AMD and NVIDIA have continued to cram more and more of them onto their GPUs to make them more powerful. And they still tend to be larger than CPUs. So it isn't just that practical to combine both into one part. Not to mention that if you did try to devote a lot more space in the CPU package to graphics, you generate a lot more heat. Think about how large the coolers are on high-end graphics cards. Then think about one cooler trying to draw heat away from a chip package that has both high-end GPU and a high-end CPU working hard during a gaming session. That's a lot of heat. Unsurprisingly, money has something to do with this too. You see, since GPUs tend to be physically larger than CPUs, they take up more space on the large round wafers they're printed on at the factory. And space on that wafer isn't cheap meaning that Intel and AMD can make more money churning out smaller, more in-demand CPUs instead, further limiting how much space on a CPU can be reserved for graphics. But wait, there's more. There are also memory limitations with integrated graphics. If you ever buy a discrete graphics card, you'll notice that it uses a different type of memory than your system, such as GDDR or HBM, which are special kinds of RAM engineered to work more quickly with a GPU which has a fundamentally different architecture than a CPU. But integrated graphics have to instead share your system's main memory, which is not only slower, but there may be less of it available than what would be on a discrete card, which can limit both resolution and texture quality in more intensive games. However, that doesn't mean integrated graphics are useless and that all gamers should go and pick up expensive dedicated cards. As time has worn on, smaller transistor sizes and greater power efficiency mean that both Intel and AMD have been able to make iGPUs that can play lots of popular titles at 720 or even 1080p as long as you don't go too crazy with the graphical eye candy. Especially more eSport and competition-oriented titles like CSGO that aren't quite as demanding. So if you're primarily into games that don't have a reputation for punishing hardware, or you're just rocking a lower res monitor, Give the graphics card that came with your CPU a shot before plunking down lots of money on a discrete card. After all, plenty of things can accomplish two tasks well. Just look at our good friend, the Spork. This episode of TechWiki was brought to you by Squarespace, who can help you create a beautiful website with their all-in-one platform. Squarespace has award-winning templates that make creating a powerful online identity even easier than ever before. Each template is a starting point for a wide range of projects, and Squarespace provides award-winning 24-7 customer support via live chat and email. You can also attend a live webinar or check out their help guides. You can now transfer your third-party domains to Squarespace, so instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you can manage all of your domain and billing settings with Squarespace, all in one spot. It's never been easier to sell products or services online with Squarespace, you can easily manage your products, orders, and inventory. So head to squarespace.com slash techwiki and use offer code techwiki to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, then like it, get subscribed, and be sure to hit us up in the comments with suggestions you might have for future videos.